This is Dr. Parsa Mohebi, Medical Director of U.S. Hair Restoration. Uh, I would like to talk about the latest technology of hair transplantation today. Uh, as we know, a hair loss is caused by three factors, gene, sex, and time. I call those three factors triangle of baldness. So the presence of all three factors are necessary to see the baldness. You have to have the gene of male pattern baldness, you have to be man, and you have to be old enough for, so for those two factors to start working on your hair and causing uh, hair loss. Uh, when you go to molecular level, uh, the, the hair loss is caused by a hormone called DHT or dehydrotestosterone, which is a byproduct of testosterone or male hormone. In our body, if we have the gene of male pattern baldness, our follicles are sensitive to the hormone DHT. So as you can see in this picture, DHT can, causes, uh, can, can cause hair follicles to, go, uh, to shrink in size, basically. So as you can see from the top to bottom and from left to right, and normal hair follicles become smaller and smaller to the point that you don't see it as a normal hair and is mostly being seen as vellus hair or uh, like baby hair. Uh, medications that are being used for uh, treatment of male pattern hair loss uh, are two main medications that are FDA approved, Rogaine, uh, and Propecia or Finasteri that uh, both of them are have been around for a while in America and they're both FDA approved and they are uh, relatively safe medications uh, of course you have to see your physician before going on these medications to uh, be discussed about uh, pros and cons of each of these medications there are many hair loss shampoos in, in the market uh, people uh, usually ask me what to use whether or not this shampoo or that shampoo is going to help me uh, the reality is shampoos are usually not as effective as people think they are because uh, even if they have active ingredients like minoxidil that is being um, you know available in some of the shampoos the shampoo is being rinsed uh, after just a couple of minutes and is being washed away and that active ingredient doesn't have enough time to be absorbed so my recommendation is to uh, mm, don't spend too much time on that kind of stuff unless it's recommended by your physician and there's something that you needed for other reasons and finally hair transplant surgery which is the only um, permanent solution for hair loss uh, let's talk about history of hair transplant first uh, hair transplant surgery started probably around uh, the beginning of uh, World War II uh, when Japanese doctors discovered that um, they can treat uh, burn wounds on the scalp from bringing um, skin from some other areas and it happened that those skin uh, the skin pieces were having hair and hair started to grow in the new area despite of that place not having hair you know prior to that so uh, late 1950s American doctors uh, started to use um, the this technique for uh, hair transplantation and for treatment of baldness in the uh, 1960s mini grafts and micro grafts were born um, prior to that we had plug surgery that basically we, we did like, some pieces of skin uh, removed from the uh, from the donor area and brought to the balding area now that those uh, pieces are becoming smaller into mini and micro grafts which are looking a lot better but still not quite natural uh, mid uh, nine, nine, 90s uh, follicular units were discovered and the concept of follicular units were uh, you know uh, understood uh, 2000 and after uh, microscopic techniques have been improved and doctors started using microscopes instead of just magnifying loops and uh, dissecting hair as follicular units as opposed to micrographs or minigraphs that were used before. This is an old hair transplant surgery. You see plugs. The patient is not bald anymore, but look at this uh, dull hair. 
on this patient's head. Um, it was pretty, you know, um, uh, significant in terms of scarring on the back and in terms of the and the the view in the front that was not natural. Of course, the patient was not looking obviously bald anymore, but uh, whoever who could see the patient uh, could realize that th there was something uh, going on here. Uh, microscopic follicular unit transplant is the, um, the most uh, advanced technique of hair transplant that we do on a regular basis and that should be the gold standard of hair restoration because we harvest and transplant hair into its natural groupings so there is no way that anybody uh, should uh, distinguish this from a normal head of hair. As I said everything is done through microscope, uh, follicular units are being, being harvested those are singles, those are twos on the left and right. Usually big teams are uh, involved, depends on the number of graphs that are uh, required and uh, uh, today having the microscopic techniques and more uh, skillful teams we can do bigger uh, hair transplants in a smaller uh, or in, in just one session, one or two sessions uh, basically people can cover the entire head. Uh, this is a pretty small procedure, 1825 grafts, just mostly to front, as you can see. On the right, after surgery, this patient is having perfectly natural hairline. There's no way anybody can the, the can, can find out this patient had a hair transplant done. Um, follicular unit transplants are, are seen like this under microscope. Uh, so basically the grafts are just slightly bigger than the hair shaft itself. Um, let's go over a few examples. This is a gentleman with class uh, 7 of baldness that has um, a, had a surgery with uh, 2650 grafts. This is him uh, after designing the hairline and temples and everything. Right after this procedure, after making sites actually. And this is uh, about uh, 10 months after the procedure which you see full head of hair, the hairs are all grown and there's no sign of baldness pr pretty much so if you look even very closely you don't see any sign of uh, any procedure done again same person from different views to get a better idea designing is very important in uh, hair restoration a lot of people forget that um, this is this is not just science it's, it's a combination of art and science and the surgeon really should have a good um, artistic uh, eye uh, to be able to uh, draw the line and uh, design the hairline. Uh, there are different devices. This is like sometimes that I invented uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we wrote some articles about it, present, uh, presented in um, you know international meetings um, with Dr. William Rassman. Uh, this is the second generation of laxometer that I just made uh, last year, and it has been in the market for um, just know a few months now uh, for hair transplant surgeons to be used to check the laxity of the scalp this is very important especially because today we do larger and larger hair transplants and uh, by having laxometer we have a better understanding of the metric of um, the scalp laxity so we won't be able to um, uh, you know we will be able to get bigger number of graphs without adding uh, any risk to uh, to the patient uh, again, uh, newest technology of hair transplants, we were talking about manual in the past, and that we're still using it in some cases, uh, that rotating devices are not working, but still we have rotating devices that in some cases they're, they're proven to be helping with the speed and sometimes with the transaction rate or uh, damaging the, the follicles. Uh, we have a robotic procedure now that patients is um, the actually getting a hair restoration through FUE um, uh, through a, a robot that is this device at this point is extracting hair doesn't place it doesn't design it just removing hair through FUE procedure and it's uh, relatively new so we have to wait and see how, how it goes and what is the actual quality of hairs and the speed if it's getting better it might be something uh, practical in the future uh, Another view of the patient getting a robotic hair transplant or the hair being harvested, which would be the robot. 
uh, I would like to talk about gene therapy uh, very briefly. Uh, the gene of hair loss has been detected. We know where it is. We know where they are actually because there, there's not just one gene. So um, they are. Ho they hope that most uh, genetic diseases are being treated by um, gene therapy in the future. So basically, you can inject to patient a vector or a virus. They can go and um, uh, insert some genetic uh, material in patients' uh, uh, cells. They can deactivate the um, maleficent uh, genes. So just like any other uh, genetic disease, um, uh, hair loss could be treated by gene therapy down the road. But at this point, we don't have anything that is working. There, there is no um, practical method of uh, treating hair loss with gene therapy. Uh, the other thing that uh, has been worked uh, uh, has been, uh, you know, uh, significantly uh, looked at uh, is uh, uh, hair stem cell that is um, using the multi-potential cells that are present in each hair follicle uh, or in the other organs to direct them to grow new hair for us. Uh, some people call it cl hair cloning, some people call it hair multiplication, which is a better name, hair multiplication, uh, meaning that we can remove a few good quality hair from the back of the uh, patient's head and grow them uh, in, in lab uh, and uh, make multiple or thousands of hair and transplant them. That will uh, mm, help with this uh, with the problem that we currently have with the number of uh, donor hair that is at times is limited for people who have mm, advanced stages of hair loss with um, not enough uh, you know donor uh, we've done some studies along with other places uh, in the world um, we have recently published in an article in cell proliferation uh, that is uh, the, the title of article was Toward Expansion of Human Hair Follicles, uh, Hair Follicle Stem Cell Cells in Vitro. Uh, we are working on one method to, um, mm, is very promising to multiply one of the two types of stem cells that is pres uh, that are present in every hair follicle. So that study uh, could be one step uh, toward uh, making stem cell research for hair or ha making hair multiplication more of a reality in the future. Mm -hmm.